Hey everybody, Ollie from Flight Comp here, and I have a new model on the bench to show you, so let's dive right into it. Um, this is actually not an F5J model. I know I do a lot of F5J stuff here, but uh, this is a new F3F slash F3B model from CCM Models in Ukraine, and it's called the Vantage. Um, brand new. It's been in development for about a year or so. And I'll just run over some details for you. I have my little note sheet here. Uh, the span is 2.98 meters. The length is 1.43 meters. And the weights for the different versions are uh, 1950 grams for the 3B version. That's about 69 ounces. Two, uh, 2230 grams for the F3F version. It's about 79 ounces. And there's actually, they list the F3J version uh, on the site, super light, uh, 1480 grams, and or about 51 ounces. Um, I guess you can you could try to fly F3J. I've I've tried to fly F3B planes and F3J before, and it doesn't work out too well most of the times. But anyway, if you want a super super light version, that's available. Okay, um, I'll get back to those notes in a, in a little bit, but uh, let's just look at the parts here. As you can see, um, all the parts come in protective covers. So we have the covers for the wings and the fuselage also has a nice cover on it and it has a cutout here so you can actually keep the cover on um, with the wings on if your model's sitting out in the sun. Tail covers, obviously. All right, let's just go ahead and pull some of these parts out. And I'll give you a look at them. Um, CCM makes uh, the Toy 2 meter, which is a really sweet slope model, like a mini F3F. And they also make um, the Optimus F3J, F F5J. So they have a lot of experience in molded construction. Um, their quality is just absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's second to none. The precision of the work is, is fantastic. So here's uh, one wing. This is sort of the standard um, graphics that they supply. You can order custom graphics. This is a neon orange over carbon. And they come with um, Servo Ramen IDS uh, pre-installed. So these are, are factory installed. And I'm pretty sure you can specify if you want different servos but basically their standard arrangement is for uh, KST uh, X10 minis, flaps and ailerons. I actually tried to put a uh, normal X10 in the flap, but uh, the servo bay is a little, a little too small for that. Super nice. Uh, one thing I noticed, and I actually talked to CCM about this a little bit, is the control surfaces are pretty small. The, aileron, the ailerons have a really narrow cord and the elevators too, and the flap. And they said that's on purpose and that's part of the, the design and through testing they found that it works really well. So I'm not gonna second guess them there. I'm, I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing. Let's look at the other wing. Is that right side up? I think so. Vantage. Uh, naked. This is naked carbon. A little bit of uh, neon orange trim. And these are the standard stripes that you would get on the bottom. Again, I think if you want a custom color scheme, you can certainly order that. Um, I'm, I'm actually building this plane for a customer. And I uh, just wanted to see how everything works. So I threw in uh, one servo already. It, it literally it took me a minute to get the servo in here. Um, so that's that's a really neat feature. It takes a lot of the fuss out of building the model. And it, it looks like uh, everything's set up pretty well for the throws as far as the lengths of arms they chose. So that's, that's good. Um, wiring is pre-installed. And uh, the connector, uh, multiplex connector at the wing root, that's pre-installed. So there's a wing panel. Put this guy off to the side, and let's look at the fuselage next. It's 
pretty, pretty damn sexy model, I must say. I kind of want to get one for myself because I've been dabbling in F3F and uh, man, it would be nice to try this guy out. Really slim fuselage, um, sort of a triangular shape up here and then it uh, sort of transitions to more of a, like an oval shape back here. The, uh, wi the wiring harness in the fuselage is pre-installed so the, the multiplex plugs are glued in already. Take the cone off. Cone is very stout. Okay, um, carbon push rods pre-installed for you. There's uh, cutouts for the servos, and uh, I guess this would be the receiver cutout, and your battery would go here. Um, I'm not sure if you have to adjust any of this stuff or maybe cut this little notch away to get it to fit your gear. I was told these uh, servo cutouts are for some kind of Futaba servo, um, but they, which is kind of an odd choice, but they provide you with a 3D printed, um, it's like a servo tray and uh, Alexander told me that if you want to use a different servo, I'm going to put uh, KST uh, MS325s in here, um, that you would glue the servo on top and it would act as a spacer for those servos. So we'll see how that goes. The um, the back is really nice where the V-tail is attached. The detail, the precision of the work is just superb. Um, and the way they cut everything so cleanly, all the little details, it's super nice. And there's a cone here that goes on the back. And it's just standard uh, ball links for the V-tails. And the one thing I love about CCM, it's such a stupid little thing, but every time they use a ball link, they drill a hole through the, uh, like the base of the ball link. So you can get a little piece of like metal and just stick it in there and turn it and pop the ball link off. It makes it so much easier. You would think everyone would do that, but, but most manufacturers don't. So anyway, those are drilled in there. So putting the V-tails on should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna look at the, uh, the cone, I haven't looked at this before. It's just carbon and uh, yeah, it's really nice. Super pointy, kind of cool. Let's just see how it fits back here. Fits perfect, nice. Okay, then as far as parts, um, you just get some, you get that, tr that servo tray shim, four clear servo covers and, uh, two clevises and some, uh, couplers. So not, uh, not a big parts, uh, bag, but you don't, you don't really need anything, honestly. The V-tails, again, the moving surfaces are really small, but I've been told that it's part of the design and it works good like that. No, um, no gap seal here, so like there's a closed channel, like it almost like it was a uh, solid core part, but it's it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's hollow. Um, but uh, I man, I hate wipers. They always get jacked up. These don't have wipers. That's okay by me. The um, the V tail horn is really nice. It's like um, it's metal, but it's like molded into the part, so it's. That's really nice. And I'll just check the fit here. See how this goes. Fits really good. Seems to fit really, really well. It's the first time I... No, actually I put these on before. I take that back. I have put these on before because I took pictures of this for the website. And uh, they move uh, nice and free. You can't get much um, up travel without them touching. Huh. 
um, but maybe you don't need that much. Again, this is a brand new model, so I don't know a ton about it. But um, I'm sure I'll have a lot of questions when I build this for uh, Alexander over there at CCM. Uh, CCM is in the Ukraine. I don't know if I said that or not, but uh, it's from the Ukraine. Look at this sexy beast. All right. Now, um, you get obviously, a, you know, the normal carbon joiner. This fits really well. It's... Uh, it's not like you have to sand it or polish it to get it to fit. It's always kind of a pain. You get a brand new model and the, everything's tight and you got to sand and polish and, you know, keep doing it over and over again until everything fits. So it's nice that stuff fits right out of the box. I don't want to pinch the wires here, but I am. It's nice. Um, okay, so yeah, there's that joiner, and then there's this. I thought this was steel before, but it, you know, it could be, but maybe stainless. Um, I don't think it's just raw steel. Um, it's definitely too heavy to be aluminum. I don't think it's aluminum. Um, this is a metal metal joiner. It's just ballast. You know, it's identical to the carbon piece that's pretty amazing it's wouldn't want to get in the way of, with, of somebody that had that in their hand that uh, metal joiner is 960 grams or 34 ounces and then it comes with um, well you can get this like I call it fully loaded so it'll have um, the metal joiner, the carbon joiner, the covers, the IDS installed, uh, more ballast, um, or you can kind of get a uh, like a basic kit where it doesn't have the steel joiner and a few other things, so it's a little cheaper. Um, but okay, so you got the steel joiner, and then they give you um, ten pieces or ten slugs, and these are 150 grams each, so that's a total of 1,500 grams or 53 ounces. So if you combined the the all the the slugs from here, or the small slugs with the metal joiner, you're at uh, 87 ounces of ballast, which is which is a good amount. Um, now the the thing with these, if I was if I was to bite on this, it feels kind of soft. I think it's lead. I really think this is lead. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but it feels like lead, which is kind of I don't know. It's kind of sketchy. I mean, I mean, lead's bad for you and all that, but uh, it's also soft. So if you like drop this or ding it, it's gonna you know dent and deform, and then maybe it wouldn't go in. I would really like to see these in brass. Um, I'm gonna talk to them about that because I don't. I don't think if it is lead, I don't know. I don't. I don't like it. Hopefully, we'll see brass. Um, the other thing too with the um, the small slugs. There's no spacers with the kit, so you have to make your own spacers if you want to vary your um, your ballast load. Um, I would I'm gonna try to get them to provide just some basic wood spacers, so you can you know change up your ballast and have different uh, weights. And then so this guy goes in a channel that's um, behind the um, the joiner. But there's also a channel in the in the front, in front of the joiner, but the kit didn't come with any ballast for that. So uh, maybe because it's so new, they don't have the ballast ready yet. I don't know. Uh, hopefully it'll come with, uh, or as an option, have small slugs here and spacers for that. You really need, you know, the slugs for the for the rear and the front and spacers for both. So I hope they, they start making some ballast spacers because I have very limited experience in F3F, but from... Um, the experience that I do have, I'm constantly putting in or taking out different loads of ballast and, you know, coming up with whatever spacers I need to keep everything secure. Okay. Um, I think I mentioned this, but you can uh, order it with 
IDS for different brands like MKS or JR or Futaba or whatever you might want to run as long as uh, Servo Ramen uh, makes the, the frames. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about what this model is because it's, it's uh, I guess, designed for a specific purpose. So from the description, this description is pulled straight from CCM. Um, it says, the Vantage is a pure competition model specifically designed for the F3F class. The aim of the development was to give the competition pilot a Vantage over the competition, especially in medium to weak weather conditions. That's really interesting. So this model was optimized for light lift, uh, medium to light lift. It is intended to sensibly expand the fleet of a competition pilot, not replace it. So what they're saying there is they want you to have this model for uh, weak conditions, medium conditions, and you gotta have something else if, if the wind is howling. So that's what they say. Following the current trend, the Vantage is therefore not necessarily designed as a classic all-arounder, but rather as a specialist for certain conditions. But it is precisely the specialization that makes the Vantage so interesting, even for the ambitious hobby pilot. Okay. Because let's be honest, how often do you stand on a slope or on a coast and really have the hammer conditions for world record flights? Well, in my experience, hardly never. <laughs> so. You know, practically every time I've tried F3F, the, weak, the lift has been very weak. Uh, during the development of the model, we drew on a wealth of experience and feedback from some of the best competition pilots in the F3F, in the F3F class. Countless competition flights were also analyzed. Now, I do know they did a lot of testing in, uh, I think, Germany and Japan with um, some top pilots. So there's, I, there's a lot behind the scenes on this airplane. I know I'm just giving you a very brief overview, but. So in this, specific, in this way, specific accents, fuselage design, aspect ratio, et cetera, could be set in com completely new profiles for the wing developed. So they're saying they have all new airfoils that they developed uh, on the wing. Special attention was paid to an excellent performance in lower and medium lift range, like we talked about, without having to accept significant loss in real, in real speed flight whatever that means. And they list some airfoils, and I don't know what these airfoils are, but there is a very interesting airfoil in the wing. So it, it lists a transition of airfoils, a MP1 through MP3, which I'm guessing is, you know, the root transitioning here. And then it says Zone V2 mod. So the, I don't know if you guys know, but the Zone V2 is a, is a very popular hand launch or F3K airfoil. So I'm, I'm guessing that might be more what the tip of this thing is. And that would explain the, the, you know, the light lift aspect of this design. So that, that's pretty interesting. Um, tail airfoil is a TP29 mod. No clue what, what that is. Um, that's about it for the notes. So, I'm actually going to, like I said, I'm going to be building this. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just do, uh, it won't be like a build video or a build series, but I'll just give you some highlights and notes on my build as I go. If I run into any problems or anything. So that way, if you're looking at this model, you can get a, get a heads up of, of how the build is. Um, one thing I'm, I'm pretty curious about is The uh, fuselage is real small and compact here, and I think they said an 18650 pack would fit here. I'll, I'll test it out. But um, usually with the F3F plane, you have to pack in a lot of lead too, so I don't know how the balance is gonna work out with the battery and trying to stuff lead in here and make everything work. But uh, again, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i look at that and I'll let you guys uh, know how that goes. So I'm really happy to see CCM like branching out and making other kinds of models besides their typical F3J and you know lightweight thermal stuff. Um, the toy, the two meter toy is just fantastic airplane. I, I loved mine. Um, and they're working on stuff for that too, like an electric fuse and I think an X-tail fuse and some other things. So yeah, big, big double thumbs up to CCM. This thing looks beautiful. I'm excited to build it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just gave you a really quick look at this and I'll make more videos on this in the future.
Um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.